Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Tazawa Tanks, back with another video. So I filmed a video a couple of months ago, um, and uh, the video was talking about keeping African cichlids in a medium-sized tank, so smaller to medium-sized tanks, and uh, that video got a lot of traction. It was uh, actually, it's been my most popular video to date. So um, I thought I would make an update and kind of talk a little bit more about some of the uh, specifics in detail as I've gotten a lot of questions from viewers either in comments or in uh, messages and things like that. So um, there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about. And what I'm talking about, um, and if you haven't seen that other video, um, basically what I'm talking about is keeping African cichlids in tanks that aren't very large. So um, a lot of African cichlid keepers are keeping them in like 125s, you know, 180s, 220s, things like that, uh, much larger tanks. And that would be ideal, but not everybody has those resources. They may not have the space. They may not be able to afford it. Um, they may be like myself where I'm on a second level, so I can't keep 240 gallons of water in one spot. I have to disperse it. So um, you have to, if you want to keep African cichlids and you have some of those limitations, you would have to do a smaller tank. And when I say a smaller tank, I'm not talking about like a 20 gallon tank or a 29 or anything like that. Basically, I'm talking about like a 90 gallon, a 75, uh, 55s are very popular, 55s or 60s, um, 65s, and kind of things in that range, um, even down to like a 40 breeder. And... Um, the 40 breeder, I would kind of put an asterisk next to that. And basically that's going to be someone who's not overstocking or is really diligent on the water changes or has very good filtration or all of the above um, and is a little bit more experienced. So like I have fish downstairs in the basement in the fish room um, and I have, a, I have a 40 breeder with African cichlids in it that are actually breeding. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm doing very frequent water changes and it's not overstocked. I only have, I think in there right now, I have about seven fish. So it's it's um, definitely on the understock side as far as keeping African cichlids. I have had a lot more fish in there um, when I was growing some of these out actually. Um, I think I had about 15 or so in there at one time and it was fine, but that's because I was doing water changes every three days or so and uh, really diligent about the water parameters and things like that. So um, anyway, um, as far as stocking, and I'll kind of start there. Um, well, maybe before I talk about stock, stocking, there's, there's a couple of things that are very important. So um, I would only recommend keeping African cichlids in smaller tanks, such as like 75s or 55s, etc. If you have a couple of things, if you have really good filtration, so either you have a great filter or you have multiple filters um, or if you and or I should say if you um, do a lot of water changes. And I'm not talking about doing a water change every two weeks um, like every other Saturday. I mean doing a water change like every three days. So um, if you've seen some of my other videos, um, I do high volume water changes and I do them frequently on some of these uh, African cichlid tanks where they're there's a heavy bio load. So for example, in this tank, and I think I have, I, I have to check the count because I've moved some fish around and stuff like that. I think I have like 28 or 29 fish in this tank, right around there, 28 or 29. And it's about at full capacity. I, I wouldn't want to do anything else in there. Um, and I may move a couple of them downstairs um, as they grow up and I can kind of decide what I want. but. But uh, I do like 75% water changes, 70 to 75% water changes, and I do that about every three days. So um, I'm doing basically 150% water change over a period of a week. So that's very, um, for some people that's a lot, it's too much, right? So um, I, I would caution you there. And then as far, as far as filtration, I have lots of filtration and I'll talk about that. So as far as stocking, you know, when you're keeping African cichlids, it's very common to do what's called overstocking. And um, one of the reasons why is African cichlids tend to be territorial and they can be pretty aggressive. Um, some species more than others. So um, even some of these in here will beat each other up and they'll kill each other if they get a chance um, if you're not on top of it and if they have an opportunity. So 
you know, if you keep fish overstocked, what happens is it kind of spreads out the aggression. So instead of one fish getting bullied by five other fish, when you have, you know, 20 fish in a tank, the aggression gets spread out. So it's not just one fish, usually, that's getting chased and bullied and, and harassed until they just succumb and die um, because of exhaustion and just, you know, they just can't, they just can't survive anymore because they're just beat to death, basically. Um, so when you have multiple fish, it kind of spreads out the aggression. So if one fish is chasing other fish, and you can see this big male here is chasing some fish around. Um, when he chases a fish, he may not just focus on one. He'll chase one, then chase another, and it kind of gets spread around. So they all kind of just get along fine for the most part, and uh, you don't have any issues. Um, so in overstocking, what is overstocking, and how do you know how to get to that number? And there are some formulas, and um, some of the most popular ones, and this is uh, probably one that John Hudson had shared with, uh, with the community um, a year or two ago, uh, when a lot of people would ask um, in some of his videos and that's basically you take the volume of the tank and you cut it in half and essentially that's how many fish you can keep um, it's not necessarily how many fish you should keep but how many fish you can keep and again that can means excellent filtration high volume water changes you're on top of it and uh, you know then you can then you can deal with that um, that heavier bio load because what you're going to have is you're going to have a lot of fish that are eating and then pooping and etc in the tank and all of that breaks down and goes through the nitrogen cycle and you have high nitrates and ammonia sometimes and so um, if you don't have the high volume water changes or the excellent filtration you will have some very some some severe issues so um, what i like to do is i like to change that formula a little bit um, i like to do um, kind of like what john has shared but then take other things into consideration. So it might be like if you have decor, so I've got a 3D background in here. So I've lost about an inch or in some places a couple of inches of, of depth in, from the front to the back of the tank. Your substrate, your rocks, if you have plants, if you have wood, um, you know, if you like to have like castles and skulls in your tank, all of that stuff takes up space. And it um, not only does it take up swimming space, but it takes up water volume. And uh, so typically what I like to do is I like to reduce that number by a little bit. So in, when I look at a tank, um, I might multiply that by like 0.9 or 0.8, so 90% or 80% even, to be kind of more on the conservative side. And then I would then um, cut that number in half. So for example, if I took like a 75 gallon tank and multiplied it by 0.9 and then lopped that number in half, I'm going to get right around 33 to 34 and that would be like okay i can keep about 33 to 34 fish in here so i'm pretty close to that um, but i personally wouldn't want to do that much in this size tank and uh, so then if i use like the 0.8 so i multiply the tank volume so 75 gallons times 0.8 or 80 percent and then lop which is 60 and then lop that number in half then i get 30. and uh, so that's pretty close to where I am I'm you know just a, a couple shy of that and for me I think that's about tops of where it should be so um, you know that that's one thing to consider is you know if, if and people have asked me how many fish can you keep and I've seen a lot of questions and forums and Facebook you know posts and videos things like that um, that's kind of a good rule of thumb is to take the volume of the tank and then reduce it a little bit so I would say to be on the safe side reduce it by about 20 percent and then cut it in half and that's about the max. Um, and it's also going to depend on what kind of tank you have and what kind of fish you have. So the footprint of the tank makes uh, makes a difference. How long is a tank and how wide is a tank? So this is a four foot tank. It's a 75 gallon tank. Um, and it's the same length as a 55 gallon, but it's six inches deeper front to back. So um, you know, when you have different size tanks, you have to also consider how much room do they have to swim in besides the water volume. Um, and in some cases, if you have a three foot tank, like if you have a 65 gallon tall, or if you have like a 40 breeder, I wouldn't recommend using that same formula um, because you don't have that same linear uh, length in the tank and it's more top to bottom. And it's a smaller footprint as far as the base of the tank. So you're gonna wanna reduce it. So when I, when I look at like a, like a three foot tank, like a 40, and a lot of people say don't keep fish in a three foot tank, African cichlids. And I would say don't keep 
larger African cichlids. You can do like smaller Mbuna and things like that. Um, obviously, you can do like some of the really small African cichlids, but we're talking about like the normal Lake Malawi cichlids. Um, you can do like Mbuna and things like that in a 65 tall or 40 breeder um, or some smaller juvenile peacocks um, or small haps. But um, I wouldn't use that same formula. I would lop it even lower and maybe even do like a maybe like 70% of the total tank volume lopped in half. So like a 65, I would say maybe like 20 fish in a 65, um, 40 breeder. You know, I've done 15, but it's kind of on the high side. So, you know, maybe 12 or so if you're really good with filtration and everything. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of the formula that I like to use as far as how many fish I stock. And uh, of course it, it matters on what kind of fish you keep. So if you are keeping African cichlids in a, in a smaller, small, and 75 gallons is not a small tank. It's a, it's a pretty big tank, um, but uh, it's a lot smaller than some of the large tanks, those six foot tanks and, and eight foot tanks and things like that. Um, it really matters on what kind of fish you're keeping. So you can't keep predatory haps. I can't have a Venustus in here, a Livingstone eye. I love them, beautiful. Um, and I've kept them before at juvenile, but I can't keep them when they're big because they are just too large for the tank and it's not fair to the fish and it's not healthy. Um, so I would say, you know, just you know, most peacocks are probably fine. Haps would have to be on the smaller side. You can see I've got a larger hap in here. Um, the, the OB uh, compressor set that's swimming over my shoulder there. Um, and he's about six inches long or so. I've got a big uh, male peacock over here. I can swing this, you might be able to see. This uh, blue guy here, um, he's, he's on the larger side, but uh, about six inches tops. Um, and then, you know, if you're doing a smaller tank, even than, than a 75, then you want to maybe focus on Mbuna that maybe get about four inches or so, or three and a half to four inches, and nothing that's going to get five or six inches. Um, so anyway, so that's all on the fish and kind of the stocking numbers. And uh, as far as filtration, that's the next part I want to talk about. So um, you need a lot of filtration. And I would, I would recommend going on the overkill when it comes to filtration. And some people say that over filtering is not good. Um, but when you're overstocking, you need to over filter, right? So you kind of want to match that over with an over. Um, I kind of go a little bit nuts on it and I do a lot. So like on this tank, I have three filtration systems. I have a hang on the back that's doing some polishing and that's where I keep um, some of my chemical filtration. I have a canister filter on here and I have a sump. The sump probably does the majority of the work um, because it has the most amount of volume. So it actually it increases the water volume. So that's kind of cheating a little bit too because I probably have about an extra 10 gallons of water volume in here which helps. Um, but there's a lot of space for beneficial bacteria to pass through all the media and that's in there. I also have a large pothos plant growing in there. So that really sucks up the nitrates that's produced by the bacteria. So a lot of filtration in this tank and my other um, Mbuna tank that's overstocked, I have the same thing. I have three filter systems. I have a hang on the back for biological with that one with a plant. I have a wet dry sump and I have a small canister filter. So. Um, I'm probably fine with just two of those systems and I'd probably be just fine with probably um, probably the sump and the hang on the back. Um, but the additional filtration really does help. Maybe I can't get to that water change every three days for some reason because I'm out of town or something like that. And it might be five or six or seven days before they get a water change. Because I have so much filtration, this system can handle it. I've, I've been on vacation where I was gone for like eight or nine days in a row. And I came back and the parts per million um, was still within um, a reasonable rate. It was below 40 parts per million. I think it was like it was like 30 or something like that. So um, it was fine. You know, I did a water change right away just because it was time. But because I have so much filtration, that system can handle it. So if you are going to do a larger, um, I'm, I, uh, a, a large amount of fish in a medium sized tank or smaller tank, you got to have adequate filtration. Plants are great because that's natural filtration. Obviously with African cichlids, they kill them, they eat them, they tear them up. Um, even the Anubius and the Java fern, um, sometimes they tear it up even if they don't eat it. So you'll get, and then it's very slow growing and those slow growing plants don't suck up um, the nitrates the same as the fast growing plants. And that's where a sump could come into play because you can then have all kinds of plants in the sump 
and as long as they can tolerate the water parameters that you have your fish in, they'll do the plants will do just fine. Um, so like I said, I have a very fast growing pothos. It's actually growing up the entire back of the tank um, on the wall side, and it's on a there's a light down there with a timer, so. Um, it does a great job of uh, sucking up uh, nitrates and things like that. So adequate filtration, um, you know, I would recommend maybe two filters or two different systems, whether it be like two AquaClear 110s or, you know, some good heavy duty, high moving, um, you know, as far as uh, gallons per hour, uh, like hang on the backs or, you know, a good size um, canister filter and maybe like a sponge filter as a backup or a wet dry sump and something else um, that way you know you, if, if something happens and you know you can't get to your water changes right away you do have that additional assistance of that extra filter and it's a little bit of peace of mind too just knowing that you have all of that filtration is it necessary maybe not but um, you know for a, a pr relatively inexpensive pr uh, you know cost of ha adding a hang on the back you can pick up a hang on the back filter you know like on craigslist for like 20 bucks that's a pretty decent one you just do your own diy um you know media in there you can throw some lava rock or you know throw in some some plastic pot scrubbers and some filter floss and then you've got a filter that costs like 20 dollars and uh, obviously there's the cost of running that filter but you know that's that's very small amount so anyway um that's all i had for today on this subject which is kind of like part two of keeping african cichlids in um, medium-sized tanks or smaller tanks. So um, I hope this was informative. I hope I answered some of the questions that um, some of you had from the previous video. And uh, as always, I appreciate your viewership. Thanks for watching. And oh yeah, and I am wearing a, today's Sunday, it's a NFL Sunday, the first Sunday of the, uh, of the, uh, the NFL season. I'm wearing my Detroit Lions hat and uh, people might wonder why because I live in San Francisco. I am a San Francisco 49ers fan also. I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan by birth because I was born here and I grew up here. And I've always been a fan, but I've been a Lions fan for several years also. My, my uncle happens to be the team doctor for the Lions. And uh, so that's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a family thing. Um, and uh, every time I go to Detroit, I get to, you know, visit the, visit the facility and hang out. And I've, I've had lunch with some of the players and I've hung out on the sidelines. Um, and then a few years ago, I was playing semi-professional football here in, in California, and uh, the Lions uh, kind of sponsored me by hooking me up with a bunch of equipment and gear and things like that. So um, they've always kind of placed in my heart. So anyway, unfortunately, unfortunately the Niners lost today, and the Lions uh, killed it. So um, I'm wearing the Lions hat today. And uh, so anyway, if you're an NFL fan, and if you're you know, if your team did well, then congratulations. If your team didn't do well, well, there's uh, 15 more games this year. So anyway, that's all I had for this time. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.